This podcast is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Double header today, 2 and 0 late night. Um with baseball, I don't know. I mean, this is it's Grambling. I don't know what kind of development you can do um against against Grambling, honestly. So it's more about the pitching, I think to me than the hitting. Uh, this is not the game where guys get their swings right because you're facing yeah. pitchers that might be throwing 75 miles an hour, you know, throwing rainbow balls from, from, from the pitcher's mound. So, you know, truthfully, like, I wish this game, I wish it was a different opponent today, somebody that would come in yeah. with fastballs that might be close to 90 right. miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of that weekend where, you know, you, you had Texas Tech coming in and not in a few weeks, right? right. Like, mm-hmm. just to kind of get some stuff going. Um. But, yeah, you know, you, you look and see, okay, what kind of experience can we get guys on the mound today? You know, who, what, what can we see? Maybe we see a gem from somebody that, you know, we use down the road is, hey, we can go to this guy today. And, yeah, you know, offensively, just make good contact. Maybe get a little bit of confidence back. I don't know. Dave Van Horn is like, well, I don't know. I'm just going to throw somebody out there, see if they can hit. You know, he's kind of at that point where he's just trying to see – who can produce at the plate and get in runs and not leave runners stranded. So maybe maybe this is a cleansing game, like a palate cleansing game, right, as you head into Murray State over the weekend. But um, just go out there, execute, do your job, and just, you know, see see if you can gain a little bit of confidence back. But, yeah, other than that, it, it, it's not much to uh, write home about. Alyssa, it was take your pick this weekend. I mean, the Hogs had had stuff going on. Uh, the baseball team with uh, the the pitching staff, Khalif battles forty two points. Uh, the track team uh, getting another indoor title. Uh, let's let's talk about this basketball team first, and and Khalif battle in the forty two, and and maybe some momentum going forward. How, how, how yeah. do you see this basketball game going tonight? Yeah, well, you know, uh, one thing I do know that I can say with certainty that Jerry Stackhouse will be the best dressed man in the building. Mm-hmm. You know that. And secondly, you know, I hope that they're able to to continue on a stretch of consistency that we have yet to see from this team all year. Even going back, and we've talked about it before, going back to that Mississippi State loss, they still just played as a better team. And then they got that win on the road at Texas A&M. And then they beat Missouri and Caleb Battle able to have 42 points. Is it a little too late? Probably. But can you at least put some consistency together, get some wins in these final stretches before you head into the SEC tournament and see what happens? Do I think that they are going to win the SEC tournament? I've got a hard time saying yes to that because Kentucky, Tennessee playing really, really well. But again, anything can happen but you have to be playing really well. What we don't want to see is this team resorting back to its bad habits and old ways that we have seen so many times where, you know, they play really well and then they get blown out by 20. And so if I can see consistency, I think that that's the best win for Arkansas tonight. Uh, Are are you, uh, Alyssa, are you concerned at all? I was just thinking about this with, with Muss and the three point line being an issue earlier in the year, how, how coach was talking about, we're not going to take a lot of three pointers. And then this last game, how well we shot the three, uh, are you worried maybe we fall in love with it and, and kind of come back to, to the normal instead of shooting that great percentage we did? Yeah, I think so. Especially when Khalif battle says, you know, like the president could tell me not to take that shot and I'll take that shot. Like, uh, (laughs) I don't know if that's a great philosophy because you're right. You can hit threes and be feeling it one night and be completely off the next night and, and be settling for bad shots. That's not what you want to see. You want to see smart basketball. There's a really big difference between just being able to shoot the ball and being smart about it. So hopefully we see smart basketball tonight, Matt. Well, and the uh, president doesn't control his playing time the way that Musk does. Right. So, yeah, right. just think of it in those terms. But that also goes to another another question about this. And and this is something that that Matt's hit on quite a bit, that no matter what, even in a season that, 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 that may be lost without, uh, without postseason play, you still are playing for yourself and for the future. And individually from the players that are out of eligibility, I do wonder about how many of these guys are playing for 
next year or playing f- to make an impression on Muss to stick around next year if this is where they want to be. Because, I mean, that's that's how Battle is playing right now. That's how, that's how Layden Blocker is playing right now. Mm-hmm. You know, I yeah. mean, none of us want to think about, oh, 2024, 25. But in their minds, too, if they want to be here, like, that's also what they're playing for. Can I can I be a devil's advocate for a minute? Go for it. Because because you also can be playing that way so that you're attractive when you're back in the transfer portal. I don't know. And that's where it's just like this world that we live in right now is specifically in college basketball where those developmental guys like we talked about last week, those just aren't there because you've got to you have to every single year almost resell yourself on why you should be here. You know, Layden Blocker is probably going to have to be like, you know, I should be a Razorback because of X, Y, and Z, or I'm hitting the portal because of X, Y, and Z. You've got Joseph Pinion. I want to be a Razorback because of X, Y, and Z. And it's like you have to resell yourself every single year with the way that this program is working right now. That's the track record, like it or not. That's how it is. You don't get to decide if you want to be here or not. Some people are making those decisions for you in certain cases. So I don't know what I don't know what you play for, except for your own pride, except for you want to just go out and you want to play as an athlete, as a competitor. But then where was that earlier in the year? So I don't know. It's it's such a I struggle with that because from a team sport, you would hope that you just want to play for the guy beside you, and it looks like they're doing that now. So maybe they finally figured it out. I mean. Even Tremont Mark said that, like, we're just a, we're really good basketball players, but we just didn't gel early on. We just had some issues early on. That doesn't make us bad basketball players. We just couldn't play as a team early on. And so I just don't know right now if, if there's anything from a team standpoint that is really, really motivating these guys. And I could be completely wrong and completely off base, but... That's how I feel watching this team, even after the way that they've played these last three games. Hey, Phil, you bring up a good point. I, I think uh, Landon Blocker would be a guy that you do have to worry about in the transfer portal. He, he's going to be better next year. I mean, each year he's going to mm-hmm. be continuing to get a little bit better. And so how much do you have to sweeten the pot to keep a guy like that? Yeah, and, and that's what you have to look at too, right? And that's where <laughs> NIL comes into to play and, and all of these other factors of, who can swoop in and say, hey, hey, Layden, I got a spot for you in my starting five, and I got X amount of dollars. And Layden goes, okay, well, you recruited me outside of high school and didn't go with you guys, but with Arkansas, but maybe I will. You know, and that's why coaches even now are talking about how you've got to keep that relationship with players who don't pick you the first time because they might pick you the second time or they might pick you the third time. I mean, you asked Josh Braun that when he came to Arkansas from Florida – he was going to go to Georgia and play for Sam Pittman. Sam Pittman takes the Arkansas job. He decides to stay home, goes to Florida. A few years later, he's up here at Arkansas. So everyone knows that. I'm not saying anything people don't know. Is that just because you didn't come to a school before doesn't mean that that coach isn't keeping a relationship with you if they might want you down the road. And so that's also what you have to look at and say, okay, how can we keep you here? How can we keep you happy? And, you know, what, what selling points do you have? Uh, but it's, it's a lot to juggle. I'm not envious of that job, but you know, you just can't be surprised and shocked anymore when people stay or people leave. Let's we, we let's take this, this topic over to women's basketball for a moment, you know, and I, I, I could never bring it up on the, on the broadcasts, but, um, you know, it's been, it's been, a, I think three games that Talia Scott has not, it's not, not played. She's not with the team. You know, and and we're told it's a serious family emergency. That can be whatever, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what the family wants wants to be communicated. And hey, I mean, you'd be naive to think that there aren't schools that are making effort to get a player mm-hmm. of her caliber on their campus. Mm-hmm. They might be gathering up money to try to do exactly that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and and here's the thing. Because you you have to protect your players, but you got to also protect yourself in this world of NIL now, uh, especially with what's happened with 
you know, what you saw in the, the rulings in the federal courts in Tennessee and Virginia about, you know, no, you can, you know, rule. They can, you can tell recruits how much money you want to offer them and get into this bidding war, and it's just going to be a mess, right? So, you know, what, a, a hypothetical, seriously hypothetical, I want to make sure that I make that very, very clear, but you have no idea what other SEC schools, what other ACC schools might be going, you are a stud, and I want you on my team. What does that look like? What does that look like? From a financial NIL standpoint, what does that look like? You know, we all know LSU has the means to bring in Angel Reese from Maryland and bring in Haley Lithover over from Louisville. And, like, we talked about this a few weeks ago, Matt. I don't think anyone can buy Caitlin Clark away from Iowa, but I bet they're going to try. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. she's Caitlin Clark. So don't act silly and naive that that's not going to happen to Talia Scott, that that at least isn't going to be a conversation that someone's going to want to have with her. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's for sure. And it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a the, scary world we live in right now. <laughs> look, I think that's in the, I think that's in the, I think that's in the back of the mind of every single coach on this campus, you know, regardless of the state of their program or the state of their season. I mean, you just have to, mm-hmm. you know, you have to, you have to appreciate the idea that there are other programs sure. that have, have had, communication with your players before they became your players and they're going to stay handsy with them while they can i mean they just they just will and 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 no one i think if you look at football right i don't think anyone thought that trey knox was going to leave and go to south carolina blew me out of the water Mm -hmm. rocket sanders thought he was going to go to the league right thought he was going to go to the nfl probably not under the suit then he transferred goes to south carolina i thought he'd maybe go back home you know wishful thinking knock on wood he went the transfer portal great Come back home, man. Come to FSU. I'm being biased. But go to South Carolina. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.